Hello, business analytics superstars, and welcome to chapter 16, Discriminant Analysis. Discrimination in the general sense, bad. Discriminant analysis in statistics, very good. In this chapter, we dive into the world of classification models, specifically how to classify cases like consumers or job applicants into distinct groups based on a set of observed characteristics. Think of it as getting a profile for different groups, except instead of physical appearances, we're focusing on useful variables like income, uh, customer behavior, or possibly past experiences. Now, just like we saw in multiple regression, discriminant analysis aims to find a linear combination of predictive variables that best separates or literally discriminates between groups. The twist here, well, instead of predicting a continuous outcome, we're trying to classify an individual into one of several distinct categories. So uh, imagine you're working in marketing, uh, trying to identify which customers are most likely to respond to a new product launch. Or maybe you're an HR sorting through job applicants into categories based on their likelihood of success. In both cases, discriminant analysis helps answer these types of questions. By creating a model that discriminates between groups, we can then classify new cases into these groups, giving us a framework for making data-driven decisions. This method is not just about finding differences, but using those differences to classify new individuals accurately. Unlike more intuitive classification methods, Discriminant analysis uses a quantitative approach that can deal with complex relationships between the variables. It helps you separate different categories in an optimal way. A discriminant analysis relies on the so-called discriminant function, a linear combination of predictive variables like income, spending habits, etc., that maximally separates the groups. You might think of it uh, as, as a scorecard. Each variable contributes to the total score based on how relevant it is to the separation between groups. Let's say uh, we want to classify customers into two groups, uh, loyal customers and churn risks, uh, based on their purchasing frequency, average transaction value, and engagement with promotions. Each of these predictive variables will be weighted, and the resulting score from the discriminant function will decide which group a new customer is classified into. The trick is that we can use a decision rule based on these scores. The individual with a score above a certain threshold might be classified as a loyal customer, while someone below that threshold might be tagged as a churn risk. Now, that threshold and the weighting of variables are determined by the analysis. In classification models, accuracy, of course, is key. But even the best models will make mistakes occasionally, uh, sometimes classifying a loyal customer as a churn risk or a high potential job applicant as unsuitable. This brings us to the importance of classification errors. Now, not all errors are created equal. In business, uh, the cost of a misclassification can vary depending on the context. Let's say you're using discriminant analysis to classify loan applicants into low risk and high risk categories. A false negative, classifying a high risk applicant as low risk could lead to significant financial loss, while a false positive, Classifying a low risk applicant as high risk may result in a missed opportunity, but at least you avoid major losses. Now, understanding the trade offs between these errors is essential uh, to refining your model and decision rules. A key tool for managing these errors is the confusion matrix, which shows how often the model correctly classifies cases versus how often it makes errors. From this matrix, you can then calculate key metrics like sensitivity, the true positive rate, and specificity, uh, the true negative rate, helping you assess your model's strengths and also weaknesses. Now, if uh, some of this sounds familiar, well, that's because discriminant analysis shares some uh, DNA with multiple linear regression. Both techniques seek to explain variation based on a set of predictive variables, but while regression predicts a continuous outcome like sales or revenue, 
discriminant analysis predicts group membership. In both cases, though, we are looking for a linear combination of variables that uh, best explains the outcome, whether that's predicting revenue in regression or uh, classifying customers in discriminant analysis. Uh, now, you'll also see some similar statistical tools for assessing the significance of your discriminant function. So uh, where uh, you can apply a discriminant analysis uh, in the business world. Well, uh, let's consider a few examples. Um, in customer segmentation, we can classify customers into groups uh, based on behavior and demographics, uh, which helps in targeted marketing uh, and uh, product recommendations. In credit scoring, we can assess loan applicants to classify them as low, medium or high risk uh, based on factors like income, employment status and credit history. In recruitment, or we can classify job applicants into categories based on skills, experience and qualifications to decide which candidates to invite for interview. So uh, discriminant analysis uh, is a very powerful tool for classifying cases. But as with any model, it's important to approach it with caution. While it provides clear cut rules for assigning group membership, uh, real world decisions are rarely black and white, you know, at least 50 shades of gray. However, by understanding the principles of a discriminant analysis, considering the costs of misclassification and validating your model's accuracy, you can use this technique to make informed data-driven decisions uh, in a variety of business contexts. So keep an open mind and a critical eye and may your discriminant functions uh, be ever in your favor. So superstars, are you ready? Don't worry, I won't discriminate regardless of whether or not you are.